Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So tonight, I'm going to start off by reading a telegram to kind of uh, lay the scene. Sent by General Miles back to D.C. The difficult Indian problem cannot be solved permanently at this end of the line. It requires the fulfillment of Congress, of the treaty obligations that the Indians were entreated and coerced into signing. They signed away a valuable portion of the reservation, and it is now occupied by white people, for which they have received nothing. They understood that ample provision would be made for their support. Instead, their supplies have been reduced, and much of the time they have been living on half or two-thirds rations. So, that's where they're at. Basically, this is American history. This is a perfect example of the U.S. government dealing with natives throughout all of American history. So, leading up to Wounded Knee, the U.S. had continued to seize native land. The bison are gone. Miners and settlers keep coming onto their land, even after giving up yet another chunk. Treaties weren't honored. They're never honored. At this time, the ghost dance starts. And this happens because the guy has a vision. Jesus comes back as a native. When he does, all the white people are gone and their grandfather, their ancestors, will come back and lead them to hunting grounds that are plentiful. It's a dance. It's a religious thing. But the dance scared the settlers. They didn't know what it was. They didn't care to know what it was. It scared them. They contacted the authorities. Now the military they have been down this road before. So they wanted to send in Buffalo Bill, who was friends with Sitting Bull. The idea was to kind of take some of the chiefs into custody, find out what was going on, maybe break it up if it was going to be a rebellion. Well, a guy from Standing Rock Agency, Standing Rock, overrode the military sent in 40 native cops to go arrest Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull is Sitting Bull. He didn't really just comply. They used force. Too much force. So much force that one of the natives watching fired. Hit one of the cops who in turn pulled the trigger on his pistol and shot Sitting Bull. Then another cop finished him, shot him in the head. Um, fearful of reprisals, a large group of those natives took off, went to join up with another leader named Spotted Elk. They were headed to Pine Ridge when 7th Cav surrounded their camp. They set up machine guns. And their scouts and interpreters were telling them, do not try to disarm them. Don't try to disarm them. Said it over and over. They ignored it, and they tried to disarm them. Now, actual chain of events is a little fuzzy through the weathers of history, but the most commonly held chain of events is that one guy is doing a ghost dance while the soldiers, some of the soldiers, are down trying to disarm everybody. They approach a deaf native who cannot, can't hear him, doesn't know what's going on. They grab him by both arms as a second native tries to intervene and his rifle goes off. The native, the deaf native's rifle goes off. 
that was it. And then over the next hour, those machine guns went to work on everybody. Friendly fire was a major uh, factor in this battle. Um, at the end of the day, 150 to 350 natives gone. Women, children, didn't matter. They were buried in a mass grave. The army, for its part, awarded 20 medals of honor. The highest commendation that a soldier can get. 20 of them. Just so you know, any time you see a large number, just an inordinate amount of uh, decorations being bestowed for a single incident that's a little weird to begin with, no, it's a cover-up. It's what it is. Um, so that's it. That, that's, that's wounded knee. Uh, ignorance, arrogance, supremacy, fear of the other. It's what caused it. And it's a perfect example and a perfect teaching tool to explain today's U.S. foreign policy. Told you this because it's Native American Heritage Month. Um, but their heritage is our heritage. It's just the part we don't like to talk about because most of it is like this. It's not good. But it could at least serve some good. If we looked at this and evaluated this and looked at it in terms of our foreign policy, how we take and exploit and give nothing back except to the leadership who's in our pocket, except to the military, the native cops. Because you always had the sitting bull. For every sitting bull, there was some native who was willing to play along with the military. It is our foreign policy. It's how it works today. And it's based on the same things. Ignorance, arrogance, supremacy, and fear of the other. We could learn a lot from our Native American heritage. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.